there, folks. Well, in this session, I wanted to kind of walk through the design and implementation process for an early program. So I want this to be kind of along the same lines of difficulty as the lab you're currently working on. So in lab one, part two, you were working on a program that was uh, going to go through and calculate and display voting percentages for three three parties in an election. So again, the essential idea for programs along these lines are you go through and prompt the user for the information that you need, you read that information in, store it in appropriate variables, do your computation, and then display the results at the end. So I want to pick another sample problem and walk through the design and implementation process from sort of the beginning text description of what the program's supposed to do to an eventual working solution. So that is where I want to go. We'll see how this pans out. So what I'm going to uh, focus on for this one, again, it'll be a different problem than the program itself. So what I'm going to do is in my code in the, the .cpp program that I create here, I'm going to first write out a text description of the problem that I want to solve. And then I'm going to go through the design. And then bit by bit, I'm going to implement the code that matches the design. And as I go, I'm going to add a chunk of code and compile it and test it to see if I've got any syntax errors or other glitches in the code that I just added. This kind of incremental development process makes it easier to track down where errors are when they crop up. Especially as you get into bigger programs, if you sit down and write out a hundred lines of code and then go to compile it, there are likely to be scads of different conflicting errors and problems, and it's much more difficult to debug than if you just add one small chunk of code, compile it, and test it, and you know any issues are likely to be in that small chunk that you just added. So that's the cycle I want to go through here. Um, I'm just going to call my program, I don't know, design example .cpp. And so first off, I'm going to make up a problem that we're going to solve. So I think the one that we'll do here is uh, doing some conversion of data values and some basic computation. So the problem I'm going to use here is to say the user will enter, or will, let's say, provide a distance in kilometers and a fuel amount in liters. And the program will compute and display the fuel efficiency in miles per gallon. So we're going to have to take their distances and compute or translate those into from kilometers into miles. We're going to have to take their fuel amount in liters and convert that into gallons. And then we're going to have to go through and compute the miles per gallon. So let's say this is our uh, initial problem. So again, I'm just stuck in a comment at the top here describing what's going on, what I'm trying to do. So in terms of my design, what do I want to do here? Well, again, I'm going to have to give the user reasonable prompts telling them what I expect them to enter. So I'm going to have to prompt the user for the for a distance in kilometers and a fuel amount in liters. I'm going to have to store those values in variables. And I'm 
probably not going to want them as integer values. You know, they might enter 4.5 kilometers or 3.7 liters or something like that. So I'll probably want to store those in floats. I'm going to want to compute the corresponding distance in miles and fuel amount in gallons. And again, store those values in variables. And again, floats are a likely choice. Um, it's also likely, if I'm going to do that, that I might turn out, I might need some constant conversion factors. For you know kilometers to dis to miles and for uh, liters to gallons. Once I've got those, then I can go through. So now, if if I've gone through and computed my distance in miles and my fuel amount in gallons, now I can go through and compute the miles per gallon. And once again, store that in a variable. and also presumably a float. And then I can go through and display the final results. So that would be kind of my initial idea of what my solution is going to look like. I just need now to be able to turn that into code. So we'll start writing our program. And in the beginning, I'm just going to Again, in this idea of incremental design, I'm just going to put a really basic skeleton here. So my include, my main routine, and maybe I just throw in a printf saying something like the uh, uh, miles or fuel efficiency calculator. name of my grand glorious program. And so this is all I'm going to have for the beginning, right? I've got comments for the initial problem, comments for the design I want to follow, and then just a skeletal version of the code. And we'll just try and compile this and see if I've messed anything up so far. Um, I'm going to put this into, whoops. So we'll compile it into something we'll call design X. And I'm going to use my warnings, so all and extra. And we'll see if we've got any errors in there. Ah, so far, so good. So if uh, so, this is my design example and my new design X. So we'll just try running that and see that that actually worked. Yeah, OK, so far, so good. Now we'll start actually we'll start actually implementing the pieces of our design. So to start off with, eh, maybe I'll get an extra, so I'll print the, the name of my fuel efficiency calculator and uh, an extra blank line afterwards. So I'll throw the two new lines in there. And then I will do my prompt for the user. Oh, actually, we should declare the variables that we're going to use. So I said I needed a variable for my distance in kilometers and one for my fuel amount. So we'll have a float for my kilometers and for my liters. So this is the initial user supplied values. We'll prompt the user. Let's throw in a comment here and say, let's uh, obtain the starting values from the user. So I'm going to prompt the user. So I'm going to say something like, well, I want to make it clear what they're supposed to be entering. So I'll say, please enter the distance traveled in kilometers, you know, e.g., I don't know, 17.2. So we give them a prompt, and then we'll 
try and read it in. Uh, should be a percent F since this is going to be a float. We want it to go into our kilometers. And I'm just going to run that compilation command again. And it's yelling at me because I've got an unused variable. So it's giving me a warning that I've declared this leaders variable but haven't used it yet. Uh, again, that's that warning is going to disappear in just a second when we actually prompt the user for the number of leaders and read that in. Let's see if this actually does what we were hoping. So it uh, printed the title, and then it's asking me to enter the distance in kilometers, so I don't know, I'll enter 200. And we haven't got it to do anything with that value yet, so the program just ends. But so far, so good. Let's go back and uh, do something similar with the leaders. So I'm just going to essentially repeat this. Please enter the fuel used in liters. I don't know, say 5.7 liters or something. I'm not getting very good uh, mileage there. Um, and then we'll do a scan F. Again, same sort of idea. We want to read it into our liters this time. So again, we'll try compiling, and we'll try running it, and so we enter, I don't know, 204, and again, it's reading it in, but it's not doing anything with it yet, so the program just ends after that. So we just keep kind of plowing along here. We'll uh, go through, and now let's convert to miles and gallons. Now, um, I need the conversion factors that I'm going to use. You know, what kind of a constant do I want to use for how many miles in a liter or in a kilometer and how many um, liters in a gallon? So I'm going to go up top here now and let's have our conversion factors between metric and imperial units. So I'm going to have a constant float for kilometers per, or let's, let's say miles per, miles per kilometer. And I'm going to say, I don't know, 623 for that. And a const float for uh, the number of liters in a gallon. So liters per gallon, and I'm going to say 3.83 for that. I'm just pulling this out of my memory, so I'm not quite sure how accurate those conversion factors are. But again, if we, uh, if we want a more accurate value, we can later on just edit our constants here. So we throw in a couple of constants, and let's try conversions. So we need variables to hold the two new computed distances. So we need a float for the number of miles and a float for the number of gallons. So we declare our variables and we go through and compute the new distance. So the number of miles is the number of kilometers times the miles per kilometer. And similarly, the number of gallons is the number of liters times the, oh, uh, pardon me, uh, the number of liters divided by the number of liters per gallon. So again, we've got some, uh, uh, we've declared a couple of constants. We've put in our computation for how to do our conversion. This is probably another point where we should try to compile again and see if we've introduced any syntax errors. Um, so in this case, it's actually warning me that I've computed a couple of values and then never used them. You know, do I really want to do this computation if I'm not going to use it? But that's what we're going to fix next. So next we're going to go through and actually use those values as another computation. 
So let's just check and see what this looks like as it runs right now. So it's still asking me to enter the kilometers. It's still asking me to enter the liters. And then hopefully it's using those as part of the computation, but we're not printing out the results yet. So let's say we go through and let's compute the fuel efficiency. So again, we need a variable to hold the miles per gallon that we're going to compute. And that's going to be equal to the number of miles divided by the number of gallons. So this has got our, uh, our final computation. So let's display the results. And so let's say we want to do a printf of, let's tell them, remind them what distances they entered. So for so many kilometers, traveled, uh, let's say, given so many kilometers traveled and so much fuel used, And I'm going to break this into two lines. So um, we want it to say, okay, for this many kilometers and this many liters, here's what the fuel efficiency was. So this first printf, I'm going to get that first half of the statement. So I'm going to say uh, for the number of kilometers and the number of liters used. And the second printf on the next line will go through and display fuel efficiency yeah. was, you know, this many miles per gallon. And we'll throw in our MPG there and see how that goes. So we'll try compiling again, see what I've blown up. Oh, actually thinks it's okay. So let's try our execution again. So let's say we'll enter uh, 100.0 kilometers and we'll say that we use, uh, I don't know, 6.5 liters and it goes through and says, okay, given 100 kilometers traveled, so that looks right, and 6.5 liters of fuel used, the fuel efficiency was 36 point uh, blah 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 miles per gallon. So, uh, double check the, the formula later on to see if that comp see if that comp bleh, computed value is actually correct. But it looks like we're getting the program behavior that we want. Although maybe we want to tweak the output a little bit so that it's not showing that by default. If I just print out a float, it shows six digits of precision afterwards. So maybe let's tweak that to just show three digits of precision. So I want three digits after the decimal place. And again, the way we do that is by adding a 0.3 to say I want three digits after the decimal. So our percent 0.3f in each case, we recompile because we just change things and we try executing it again. And I'll use the same values, say 100.0 and 6.5. And so now we see that it's giving us three digits after in, in each of the uh, display values. So again, uh, we might want to clean this up and get the output looking prettier, but this is the basic idea, right? We go through this incremental development process. You know, we think about the problem that we were given, the design we want to use, and then we gradually turn that design into code and just keep going until we get the behavior that we want. All right that is probably a good place to leave this one.